Hey everyone, this is Darken with Enlightened.com, and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how to paint fur, and I'm actually going to start out by creating a quick mask. I did this in a previous video, and this way I can keep my the painting of my dog on a separate layer, and I can quickly block in these colors using gradients, and it's just a, a quick and easy way to do this, because um, I'm trying to paint this as quickly as possible. And also, the reason I did this tutorial in the first place is first because everyone wants to know how to paint fur, um, you know, without using crazy brushes. And the other reason is because someone had mentioned how I said that I used the round brush a lot in my paintings, and they thought that I didn't actually use it as much as I claimed. And part of that is because within the last maybe seven months I started using a different brush in uh, re to replace the round brush it's sort of like a round brush but it has a little bit of a bristle to it I think it's in my uh, my downloads so you can check that out but yeah for this tutorial I wanted to only use the round brush so I'm not going to use any other brushes I'm only using the round brush that I normally use and I'm not going to be using like any effects or anything, so I'm only going to be doing everything with the round brush. And the other purpose with this tutorial is that I wanted to show people that it doesn't really matter what brush you use, you can use pretty much any brush to accomplish what you're trying to paint. Now the main purpose of custom brushes is to speed up your workflow and to make, to make things easier, but you know, if you need to paint something with just the round brush, you should be able to do it. And so this tutorial kind of proves that even though I'm painting a soft and furry dog, I can still use the round brush and create that effect. So I mean, it's kind of like, you know, a, an I told you so type video where it's like someone says, hey, I bet you can't do that. And so of course, knowing me, I go off and I'm like, oh yeah, and I try and prove that I actually can do it. So yeah, this is uh, just going to cover, you know, that question that everyone asks, you know, what brush do you use, and what are your brush settings, and it really doesn't matter. You know, I know people always are interested in what brushes other professionals use, but it really doesn't matter. So just to give you a little bit of information about this painting, I, again, I'm using the round brush that just has opacity jitter set to pen pressure, and um, yeah, I have the my dog on a separate layer, and right now I'm just blocking in the background. I'm not really going to paint out the entire car interior. I'm just going to kind of put shapes and colors in the background because the main focus of this painting is, you know, how to paint fur, not how to paint the inside of a car. And um, also, you'll notice that I'm not color picking from the photo. I'm just trying to create the colors just by eyeballing it. You know, that way you can kind of train yourself to see and recognize colors. And I think the painting took me about 45 minutes, so this video is sped up by four times, so I don't normally paint this fast. That would be insane if I did. But yeah, so just with the painting process, you'll notice that I started out with just the, the base color and then really broad, large shapes. And then I'm going in and kind of refining each of those shapes and pulling out smaller shapes. But now the key to painting fur or hair is to start out with large clumps. You don't want to start out with every single individual hair. So you'll notice that I have you know, very large masses of hair. And then in just certain areas I'm going in and pulling out um, different strands of hair. And people are probably wondering how I um, control my edges with just one brush. Going from you know, the soft fur to the harder edges. You'll notice that when I want to get a harder edge, I will make my brush a lot smaller, and therefore I can get that harder edge. And then if I want to soften something up, I'll use a larger brush. And then I'm also not pressing down as hard when I'm wanting a softer edge, versus you know, pressing down as hard as I can whenever I want to get a hard edge. So again, just using that uh, opacity jitter that's set to pen pressure to help me out with my edge control. And in the beginning, I start out, started out with a line drawing that I had done. Um, it was just a direct drawing method, so I wasn't tracing or anything. I was just drawing as I would if I was looking from a live model. 
and I just skipped that intro part because I've done a lot of line drawings in these tutorials before so you kind of know how I go about doing that and I just wanted to kind of focus on painting the fur. I guess I should probably talk a little bit about color as well. You'll notice that whenever I'm painting from reference I always just go straight into color and that's because you know, the color is already there. I don't really have to think about anything. So, I mean, it, it's just obvious that you would start in color first instead of doing a black and white study and then going into color. Now, for my professional work, I usually start in black and white because I usually don't know what I'm going to do for the color palette. And plus, it's a lot faster to start in black and white, especially if I have to do a lot of different thumbnails and a lot of different compositions and things and I know that a lot of changes are going to be made so I don't want to sit and worry about color and then have to completely start over on my painting. So for this one my dog is kind of like a cream colored so it's it's not she's not all white and if you're ever painting in a white object you don't want to paint it just solid white they're going to be um, areas of cool colors and areas of warm colors and mixing up those different types of colors will help your color palette and make it look a little more believable. So you'll notice that you know in the shadows there are a lot of reds and oranges and purples and blues and then toward the lighter areas it goes a little cooler there's a lot more of blues and greens and grays and then you know right where that bright spot is on the top of her head where you can see the sun kind of hitting the top of her hair you're gonna get a lot of pure whites actually but uh, you know for that highlighted area I'm gonna save that part for the end so I'm kind of painting in what's under it and then above that I'll go in and paint in the, the highlights You'll notice here I'm on a new layer and I'm just pulling out some of these little strands of hair. And I'm not being too careful with this, you know, I'm not like trying to copy the photo exactly. I'm just looking at it as a guide and then I'm just pulling out random strands of hair. And while I'm doing this I'm thinking about composition and tangents and all that and trying to think of some interesting lines and shapes for these hairs to go in. I don't want them to all look the same, so I want a, I want a little bit of uh, randomization in the shapes. So you'll notice, I, sometimes I'll erase out some strands of hair. The other thing you probably notice, and I do this with most of my paintings, is that I paint zoomed out. So I'm at 16.7% right now, so I'm not going to be zooming in and painting you know, all the little shapes and pieces of fur and everything. So I'm just trying to keep everything in uh, fairly loose shapes, actually. Um, it saves a lot of time. I mean, if you zoomed in on this, it, it wouldn't look as good, obviously. Um, so right here, I'm, I was trying to use the dodge tool to kind of brighten up those whiskers, but I didn't like it, so I just completely erased it. Now I'm going in and repainting them and just blurring them a little bit, just so that they don't draw too much attention. I think at one point I actually zoom in to 25%, but I think that's the the most I zoom in on this painting at any given point. I'll, I'll, at the end I'll zoom in more so you can see what the actual brushwork looks like, and it's going to be really loose, so um, it always tightens up whenever you're zoomed out. So again, I'm just on a, a layer on top of everything, and I'm trying to pull out these little strands of hair, and little whiskers and things. And I just want to keep those on top because I can move them around or erase them easily if I want to and also I can paint behind them without having to worry about uh, painting over them. So these little dark areas under her ears and around her ears are great areas to not only add some darks but to also add some harder edges. So you'll notice that I'm going in with the, the smaller size brush and trying to get some of those harder edges. going in with the highlights yeah so for the highlights in the eyes I zoomed in to 25% just so I could see it a little bit better but I think that's the, the farthest I'm gonna zoom in on this painting 
I mean, I'm not really going for a photorealistic approach either. Uh, I mean, it looks, you know, pretty three-dimensional, but, you know, it's not like a crazy photorealistic painting. And, you know, that's not really what I was going for. I basically just wanted to show the versatility of using just the round brush. Now what could be a really cool exercise is if, if you just take any random brush in your little brush menu and try and create an entire painting using only that brush. That might be a good way to uh, test your versatility and how to create different edges and shapes and textures you know, within the confines of just one single brush. Um, I remember I saw this one painting, I can't remember who the artist was, but they only use like the smoke brushes like there are these smoke brushes that you can download that are taken from actual like um, like candle smoke and things like that and he did like all these creature paintings with only that smoke brush and it was really awesome so I mean that's something that you normally wouldn't think to do but uh, it came out with a great result yeah so that for that background I blurred it again a little bit with the Gaussian blur just to give more focus on my dog and then I, I added like a couple little brush strokes of uh, some harder edge shapes in the background yeah this painting is pretty much coming to a close so yeah I'm zooming in right now so you can kind of see and it's, so it's super loose and I'm actually gonna slow this down to 100% so you can actually see the brush strokes as I'm moving this around so it's not all sped up. But yeah, it's uh, incredibly loose when you're zoomed in, but when you zoom out, you know, it looks pretty uh, photorealistic. So again, this painting took about 45 minutes, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and you learned some things about how to use the round brush to create fur and hair, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.